Hello everybody and welcome once again to SFF 180. It is the evening of Memorial Day. I'm sorry once again, uh, getting this one up a little bit late, but it's been a holiday weekend and I hope you all have had a very, very nice one. Uh, I have had a very rainy one uh, down here in Austin, but uh, most of that seems to be out of the way. And uh, as you see, I well, as you may see, I have a, a rather impressive stack of books here for Mailbag Monday. Um, the week sort of, you know, it seemed like the, they were all just trickling in slowly, but by the time the end of the week rolled around, uh, it had all added up to a, a pretty hefty stack. So let's go ahead and get through them all. And thanks once again, as always, for joining me. Remember, the whole point of Mailbag Monday, I open up my new review copies, uh, show them to you, we discover what they are together, and then you let me know in the comments which of these looks most exciting to you. All right then, let's get stuck in. I'm uh, going to start with this one here. It's a package from Random House. Well, how about this? Uh, this is The Science of Discworld by Terry Pratchett. Uh, this is another one of those tie-in books that uh, seem to be coming out right now. Um, I A few weeks ago, I had a book called The Folklore of Discworld uh, that I showcased here for you, and now this is The Science of Discworld. Let's see what, uh, what this one has to teach us about science and turtles all the way down. Can unseen universities, eccentric wizards, and orangutan librarian possibly shed any useful light on hard, rational, earthly science? In the course of an exciting experiment, the wizards of Discworld have accidentally created a new universe. I, I hate it when that happens. Within this universe is a planet they name Round World. Hmm. Round World is, of course, Earth. Yeah, I got that. And the universe is our own. As the wizards watch their creation grow, Terry Pratchett and acclaimed science writers Ian Stewart and Jack Cohen Use Discworld to examine science from the outside. Interwoven with the Pratchett's original with Pratchett's original story are entertaining and enlightening chapters which explain key scientific principles such as the Big Bang and the evolution of life on Earth, as well as great moments in the history of science. Oh, this sounds fantastic. Um, so the science of Discworld, uh, Pratchett Whimsy, and Actual Science. All together in the same book. It is from Anchor Books. And uh, when is it happening? Uh, 3rd of June, so uh, next week, I guess. Uh, a little something from Macmillan Holdings. Uh, it feels like this one could be an audiobook. It's about that size. It is! It is an audiobook! And as you see, it is uh, Orson Scott Card and Aaron Johnston uh, with their uh, new book, uh, Earth Awakens, uh, in the first Formic War series, which is a prequel to. Uh, the whole Ender's Game saga, you know, again, Scott is just uh, milking that Ender's Game. Um, anyway, yes, we've, we've all been through the big discussion before about, uh, you know, whether or not Orson Scott Card is a person we want to support. That is your uh, personal uh, choice of conscience. But anyway, um, this audiobook has now been sent to me, so I guess that means that the hardcover is available as well. Okay, and it's uh, 15 hours on 12 CDs, and it, uh, six readers are credited. So there you are, Earth Awakens. Okay, and this is uh, another arc from Tor. This is an August release, Alien Hunter Underworld. Uh, it's by Whitley Stryber. But anyway, this is the searing sequel, I am told. Not merely a sequel, but a searing sequel to Alien Hunter, uh, which I guess came out, um, you know, a year or so ago. Uh, Flynn Carroll works for the most secret police unit on the planet, seeking the most brilliant and lethal criminals who have ever walked free, thieves and murderers from another world. So, yeah, you know, if you need something to... Uh, scratch your little X-Files itch. Uh, here is Whitley Stryber once again with more aliens. And I have a package here from the Hatchet Group, which is Orbit, the imprint that is currently uh, having its books, all of its shipments, and its pre-orders completely frozen out by Amazon. And what uh, pretty much everyone who isn't Amazon is saying is a very unfair and extortionate um, situation. Uh, check my Amazonopoly video uh, for more information about that. Among the books that Amazon doesn't want to sell you, but other people do, is this one here, The Girl with All the Gifts. The author is M.R. Carey. Uh, this has been getting quite a lot of buzz, as a matter of fact. All right, I've heard this book compared favorably to uh, like Stephen King's Firestarter or Justin Cronin's The Passage. But anyway, this is uh, M.R. Carey's The Girl with All the Gifts. Melanie is a very special girl. Dr. Caldwell calls her his little genius. Every morning, Melanie waits in her cell to be collected for class. When they come for her, Sergeant keeps his gun pointing at her, while two of his people strap her into the wheelchair. She thinks they don't like her. She jokes that she won't bite, but they don't laugh. Melanie loves school. 
She loves learning about spelling and sums and the world outside the classroom and the children's cells. She tells her favorite teacher all the things she'll do when she grows up. Melanie doesn't know why this makes Miss Justineau look sad. It is from Orbit, a hatchet title, which means, uh, by all means, get it from Barnes & Noble or, or um, let's see, Powell's, IndieBound, you know, your local in, uh, independent neighborhood bookstore, maybe, if you have one in your town. The Girl with All the Gifts. Okay, and here's a big old hardcover from the Penguin Group. Okay, guys, I am super excited about this. I've been waiting for this one for quite a while, and it's finally out in America. Uh, from Ace, this is On the Steel Breeze by Alistair Reynolds. This is the second novel in his Poseidon's Children trilogy. I'm so happy this is out. Uh, check my website. In fact, I'll link it below uh, for the sfreviews.net uh, review that I wrote of Blue Remembered Earth, which is the first book in the trilogy. I think pretty much Reynolds' best work. In Blue Remembered Earth, the first volume of the Poseidon's Children trilogy, we were introduced to a utopian world 150 years in the future where crime, war, and disease have been banished to history. Africa is now the leading technological and economic power with the Akinya family empire in charge. Readers embarked on a journey with Jeffrey and Sunday Akinya as they investigated clues that Eunice, their grandmother, left behind to alter the course of humankind as well as the Akinya family. Uh, really, it was just... Absolutely riveting the, uh, the way Reynolds unfolded all of that, traveling through the solar system, uncovering these clues. Now in the sequel, On the Steel Breeze, out June the 3rd, Alistair Reynolds jumps ahead 200 years after the events in Blue Remembered Earth with Chiku Akinya, the great-granddaughter of Eunice. Fueled by the same fire as her ancestors, Chiku strives to maintain the family name and influence in human history, for she is one of millions in a fleet of ships headed towards a far distant planet that they intend to colonize and call their new home. Except there's one problem, the planet is already inhabited. So, very high hopes for this one. I will be adding this to my queue extremely soon. On the Steel Breeze by Alistair Reynolds. Uh, a very little package from HarperCollins. Okay, well, Ian Douglas is a writer of space opera and some military science fiction who has been uh, popping these books out quite a bit. This is the fifth in a series I've been looking at, looking at, uh, thinking that it, it might be quite, uh, you know, entertaining escapism. Star Carrier. This is book five, Dark Matter, by Ian Douglas. In the vein of the hit television show Battlestar Galactica, you see, comes Ian Douglas's Dark Matter. Uh, the United States of North America is now engaged in a civil war with the Earth Confederation, which wants to yield to the demands of the alien Shadar. It's one of these alien names that has an apostrophe in it. So you know very much where uh, Ian Douglas's creative antecedents are. Um, so anyway, uh, though these aliens want to limit our technology and um, all that kind of good stuff, and I guess we're having none of it. Alrighty then, so yeah, you know, if you like this kind of thing, uh, you know, exploding spaceships and, and excitement and adventure, um, this could very well be the series for you. But uh, I have all of them, so uh, of course. Uh, so I may, I may check them out, um, could be fun. And another HarperCollins package. Well, this looks rather sexy, and it's uh, it's kind of wide. Uh, but this is called Thornjack. Okay, well, this is going to be out on the 24th of June. Um, Finn Sullivan has lost her older sister to suicide. Fleeing the memories left in San Francisco, she and her father moved to an upstate New York town filled with socialites, hippies, movie and theater folk, where every corner holds possibilities and mysteries. There, Finn meets the mysterious and devastatingly handsome Jack Fata, but the town and its denizens are far more than they seem, for both good and evil and attention from the Fatas brings dangerous consequences. To free herself and save her love, Finn must confront the Fatas and unravel the secrets surrounding her sister's death. Okay, so it's being compared to Cassandra Clare, Melissa Marr, Erin Morgenstern, that kind of thing. So, uh, a bit on the urban paranormal fantasy, maybe with a little bit of romance thrown in. Oh, okay, and then back here on the back cover it says that it's a modern retelling of the ancient Scottish ballad of Tam Lin. Okay, so there's that. All right, well, if this looks like it is your cup of tea, here we go. Thorn Jack by Catherine Harbour. Her first novel is available on the 24th of June. Very heavy tome from Random House. Okay, Robin Hobb fans, this looks like your time to squee. Uh, this is available the 12th of August. Fool's Assassin. Uh, Robin Hobb's acclaimed Farseer series, praised uh, as an exceptional combination of originality, magic, blah, 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 and all these critical reviews, um, marked a watershed moment in modern fantasy and joined to the groundbreaking work of George R.R. R. Martin in paving the way for major new voices from Brandon Sanderson to Naomi Novik. Now Hobb's most beloved characters, Fitzchivalry Farseer and his uncanny friend the Fool, are back. 
in an astonishing novel that opens a dark and gripping, gripping new chapter in the Farseer saga. I would need to go back and, uh, you know, jump on the original trilogy, uh, but, you know, that's easily done between now and August, so let me know, you guys. And last, but by no means least, we have a book from Tor. And this is The Severed Streets by Paul Cornell. This is a sequel to London Falling, um, kind of a police procedural spin um, on urban fantasy. Uh, the first book was uh, very well received. I have it, so this could be another one of those book one and book two things for me. Uh, but let's see. Um, Paul Carnell, British writer, best known for his work on Doctor Who, for which he penned three Hugo Award-nominated episodes. Uh, Tor is proud to announce uh, his, this new book here. Detective Inspector Quill uh, is desperate to find a case to justify his team's existence within London's Metropolitan Police, with budget cuts and a police strike on the horizon. Quill thinks he struck gold when a cabinet minister is murdered by an assailant, who wasn't seen getting in or out of his limo. A second murder, that of the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, presents a crime scene with a message identical to that left by the original Jack the Ripper. The new Ripper seems to have changed the M.O. of the old completely. He's only killing rich white women. Oh, the inquiry into just what this supernatural menace... I think they left something out here. Uh, ...takes Quill and his team into the London occult underworld. Alrighty then, well, you've got, uh, you know, murder mystery galore uh, in A Dark Fantasy London, The Severed Streets by Paul Cornell. And that is all I had time for on this episode of The Mailbag. Thank you once again for joining me. Um, you know, not many of you, I am sure, watching videos on Memorial Day. You're having a lovely time with your families and friends over the barbecue grill. Or uh, remembering uh, your friends and loved ones who have uh, served in our fine armed forces for us. So uh, thank you all for your sacrifice, my military viewers. Uh, but until I see you guys next time, remember, please like, share, and subscribe. On Friday, the channel passed 400 subscribers. I'm very happy about that. Thank you so much. Looking to get to five now. So uh, I will see you all next time. And until then, happy reading.